All right, so I have had a lot of people ask me about how to make the black top for the Jeep Wrangler. Um, what that looks like is this and this. Uh, just a disclaimer right off the beginning, if you're super OCD, maybe this isn't for you. You are going to have these ghost marks. Um, not really sure why they pop up, even if you perfectly paint match it. For some reason, they pop up. But... I'm going to do this build in two different videos. The first one's going to be the cosmetic customizations, and the second video will be uh, more along the lines of the tune and the mechanics and then a test drive. So let's get started. So the first choice is whether or not you like the factory tires or some of the aftermarket options that they offer. Um, I usually stick to these. Uh, if not, I use the, the OEM ones that come on it. But it's just a preference deal. There is uh, some differences in the amount of grip that the tires have. I have more luck with these. Um, but like I said, between these and the OEM, uh, the difference really just boils down to a preference. There's not that big of a difference. However, if you drive on ice and stuff a lot, I uh, have noticed that the spike tires actually do grip way better than any other tire, as, as would be expected. Um, in real life, the chains, uh, those perform well in snow and so on and so forth. But for a basic trail rig, these tires will be fine. wheels kind of just boil down to a preference. Um, I'm going to do something a little bit different so that it doesn't look like all the other ones that I have. I, I really have uh, a thing for building these Jeeps. Um, this one is going to be blue. <coughs> so I'm going to go ahead and do the blue accents on the ring around the wheels uh, just because I have the red and white one back in the outside of the garage. So I figured I'd make this one blue and be a little patriotic. The big thing to take into consideration when you're selecting a color is something that's going to be easy to duplicate uh, because when you go in to add the, the layers of the vinyl to it, uh, you will have to um, to clean up the edges to match the paint <clears throat> excuse me back to the the color that you originally choose so what I've noticed is these predetermined colors not all of them are easy to duplicate so what I found is best is to just kinda use the the color scale and then pick a corner um, you're not going to get as many varieties of colors, but it's a lot easier to match. So we'll go with that. And we will jump over into the wraps. <clears throat> what I found is easiest to use is to manipulate and stretch and <coughs> uh, use the flame um, vinyl. If we do that, you can see how it almost does a, a two-tone just, just in that step. So if we slide that all the way back, we can actually make the flames come from the rear. And we'll bring it down to where the black top would be. And again, what this is supposed to do is just to kind of simulate um, how Jeeps have uh, the hard tops. And uh, again, you can do other colors, just typically the black is, is most common. <clears throat> so we are going to go with black. And again, See, some of these other colors um, I've tried to mess with, and it, and it seems to make the ghost mark um, on the side more pronounced. So again, like I had said, uh, definitely going down into the corners 
um, helps when you go back to, to have to color match for other layers of the wrap. All right, I got just a little bit of it ahead of myself on the first layer. Uh, you want to bring it to the roof line, and we'll set that as come on. There we go. We'll set that one, and then we'll use the flame one again. Again, come from the back, and then a lot of this just comes from playing with these. Um, as you can see, if you manipulate the uh, front and back stretch, you can get a flat line out of it. And then with that, you just slide it forward to the door crease and try to line it up with the body line as best you can. There's that one. So, and you'll see um, where we've got the I guess it would be over wrap, but over spray, so to speak. And I'll show you how to clean that up in just a moment. Continuing. Use the flame one again. Actually, this one might be easier to do with. Where it is? There it is. See if we can get that to come down to the bottom half of the body and then stretch it out. And again, the more you do these, the better you'll get at them. Uh, my first one looked really rough, so if it doesn't come out perfect, uh, just play with it for a while. And if, I mean, the graphics on this game are pretty good, but they're not perfect anyway. So if it doesn't bug you, chances are other people aren't going to notice. Um, and you're going to get a lot of looks anyway just for the fact that um, if you if you do it even remotely decent, people are going to think that it's an option and ask you, oh, hey, where'd you get the black top? And then you can explain that you made it. See, there's those ghost lines. And like I said, they, they bug me too, but it's just one of those things. Back to the flame wrap. Bring that up. And I take this one... If you, I'll zoom in here, you see the line where the, on the Jeep, the windshield would fold down. Um, I go to that line, just like as, to keep it as realistic as possible. And so as you can see, I mean, it's already starting to look like a blacktop Jeep. Now, this back here, um, if you're going to put a spare tire on it, uh, like the tire holder on the back this isn't probably a big deal to you I don't always um, so it kind of was a pet peeve of mine it bugged me a lot in the first ones I did so for those of you that are extra like I am I will show you how to color match the tailgate I would definitely say that this is probably the most <laughs> the most difficult one, even with as many times as I've done them. I never seem to remember exactly how I manipulated this particular vinyl because it's not an easy one to work with. And if you get too lost in where you've moved things, it's really not that hard. Just hit clear layer and then go back and start over.
Okay, so what I ended up with, uh, just so you guys didn't have to see the whole um, process of me trying to remember, uh, is on this vinyl in the top right. Um, get the the sliders adjusted somewhat like this, and you'll see if you take the front and back alignment one and just slide it slightly to the right. No, I'm sorry. Slightly to the left you'll see that it comes up and covers that back tailgate and then you can turn it blue as well so and those ghost lines can be found throughout it uh, like you can see there's a little bit next to the tail lights but nothing really noticeable that the ones that are most noticeable are on the door and Really, like I said, they really don't bug you unless you notice them. So I apologize if I brought them to your attention, and maybe uh, would have you would have otherwise been spared and not noticed them. But I know there's going to be some OCD people in the comments that that call it out. So I'm just letting you know I'm aware of it, and I can deal with it. Make the wheels black. And body modifications, honestly, is really up to you. However, front and rear bumpers obviously uh, drastically affect your approach and departure angles. On my trail Jeeps, I typically run with, like, a, I prefer no bumpers on them. Sometimes it looks weird, though. Uh, especially the rear bumper, it looks kind of silly without it. But um, if you put a spare tire on there, uh, it, it takes away from that. So... We'll just run through this real quick. On the fenders, I typically uh, do the cut fenders, the high school special, the high school kid with the sawzall. Um, and what that does is, I like the fender flares, I like the way that they look, and um, I, I have them on one of my other Jeeps. But one of my big OCD things as well is uh, when you get flexing and going through trails and stuff like that, I hate seeing the tire go through the fender. Um, so my my only remedy for that at the moment is to not have them. So that's why I do the cut fenders. It gives the it gives more room for articulation and stuff like that. I like to see I build these to do slow trails and stuff like that. So I definitely enjoy being able to see them flex and and everything without going through the fender or the rear quarter panel. I think we'll do the small light bar for this one. We'll put a snorkel on it. Yeah, spare wheel holder doesn't look bad. Alright, I think that is it for the cosmetic modifications. Um, like I said, I don't want this video to be too long, so I'm going to do it in two different parts. Uh, the second video will contain um, the tune, like the suspension setup. Um, I may do one. I'm doing this one as, like a, as if it was a YJ, uh, so it's going to have leaf suspension. Um, I may do another video with the uh, Solid Axle Pro. Some people like those. Uh, I don't really notice enough difference. And, and actually with these, you get, um, I feel like, you, I'm pretty sure you do get a better pinion angle. So the drive shafts uh, don't stick. They're not as exposed as the Solid Axle Pro. Of course, on the Solid Axle Pro, you can do the different axle types, which uh, changes the, the pinion angle. But just for aesthetic reasons i i like these better um some people some people will disagree with that i don't really notice a whole lot of differences uh definitely worth the sacrifice of aesthetics in this instance to do the the solid pro but if you guys want me to do a video on them i will 
I may have actually, nope, that one's leaf spring as well. So mm, there's a couple other of the builds that I've done. Just realistic Chevys. They got the K5 Blazer and the, and of course the old Silverado. But anyway, uh, I will get off here and I will, uh, like I said, follow this up with a video that contains the tune and a test ride. Thanks.